When you buy lamb shoulder, it usually comes in this netting, which keeps the meat together once it has been deboned. Just simply remove it. The first step in this lamb tagine is to marinate the lamb with the onions and spices. Let it marinate for at least two hours or even overnight. This way the spices and onions can get right into the lamb. Using a sharp knife, remove the excess fat from the lamb shoulder. Leaving a little bit of fat is fine as it will add tenderness and flavor to the stew. To dice the lamb, first lay it out, looking for the natural seams. Dice the lamb into approximately one and a half to two inch pieces. Again, removing excess fat as you go. Also make sure to cut the meat across the grain. Now add the spices to the diced lamb and mix together. Then peel and roughly chop the onions. Pulse the onions in a food processor until they reach this consistency. Then add to the lamb and fold everything together. Place into the refrigerator and allow to marinate for at least two hours. To cook the lamb, first preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a deep casserole dish that is oven proof, sear the lamb in batches over medium high heat. You could also use a large frying pan to brown the meat, then transfer it to a casserole dish or Dutch oven with a lid or cover it with foil. When browning or sauteing meat, do not fuss with it or move it around too much. Otherwise, you will bring down the pan temperature and the meat will not brown properly. Also, don't crowd the meat in the pan as it will steam and you want to sear the meat because it adds both color and flavor to the tangine. Transfer the first batch of lamb to a plate and continue searing the rest of the meat. With the final batch of lamb still in the pan, crush and add the garlic, salt, pepper, and all of the remaining spices. Then add the chicken stock, the remaining lamb, and bring the stew to a boil. Cover the pot and place into the oven. Let cook for approximately 45 minutes to an hour. When you check the lamb, find one of the larger pieces. The meat should come apart quite easily if it's done. Notice that this piece is still a bit tough to pull apart. This will likely need another 20 minutes or so in the oven. Once you put the meat back into the oven, I suggest jumping ahead to the next step to get the squash ready. To start the squash, begin by peeling it and cutting off the ends, so it sits flat when you cut it.
stand the squash upright, then using a sharp knife and cutting away from your hand, cut the squash in half from top to bottom. Now scoop out the seeds and fiber and discard. To dice the squash, cut it in half widthwise and then slice it again lengthwise. Cutting the squash in half first makes it easier, safer, and ensures that all of the pieces are roughly the same size. About one inch pieces is what you're looking for. Place the squash into a bowl and add the olive oil, salt and pepper and toss thoroughly to coat. Pour the squash onto a parchment lined baking tray for easy cleanup. Or if you're not using parchment, simply spray the tray with nonstick spray. Bake for 15 to 20 minutes or until tender. Check the squash after about 12 minutes. If a fork goes into one of the bigger pieces easily, the squash is done. These are not quite done because they are still a bit crunchy. Set the roasted squash onto the stovetop to keep warm if the lamb is not quite ready. This squash is now perfectly cooked. One final check for the lamb. See how tender it is? To finish the tangine, dice the onions and carrots and add to the pot. For the carrots, don't worry about cutting perfect pieces. Just roughly cut them like this. Next chop the prunes. Be careful with prunes, even if they say they are pitted, you may still find one or two seeds. Fold everything together and place back into the oven for approximately 20 minutes. The stew is ready once the carrots are fully cooked. Just check one of the larger pieces with a small paring knife. Then remove the cinnamon stick and the orange peels. Lastly, we need to add the roasted squash. You don't want it to break apart, so just fold it in at the end. You can cook the squash in the stew with the carrots and onions, but I prefer to roast it separately because I like the contrast in color and even the texture that it gives the stew. The lamb tangine is now ready to enjoy. I always serve this with traditional Moroccan couscous to soak up all of the delicious sauce.